Whenever I sit with you and we have a conversation, it's almost like you know we hit that meta spot that we are going spiritual. And oh, another thing, another thing that you know, Rajan. People don't know Rajan as I mean, I'm sure they all know you as you know the cafe guy. Like he runs the cafe one hundred eight. Everyone knows one hundred eight. But I think there are very few people who've actually seen this side of yours. That you are this you know calm dude who can actually sit you down and talk to you about any goddamn thing on this planet. Yeah. So I think uh, this has been, you know, taken some time to come to fruition as well, and uh, yeah, like I'm excited to be here. This is the first time I'm doing anything like this. So you've never been on a talk show interview. No, I mean we anything. have had opportunities, but it just uh, hasn't happened yet. And right. this was the first time, and it's been a while in the making as well. So. Right. I have been excited, and today is the day. So oh, happy to be here. Man. I'm, I'm lucky that I'm your first. <laughs> if that sounds right, but bro, first thing, okay, this question, uh, and I really, really wanted to share it as a fan of your work. What uh, you and Bree? Oh, by the way, shout out to Bree. I love you more than I love this guy. Yeah. So it, what you and Bree have started, it is actually phenomenal, and I'll tell you why because. You, you know, have you heard of the thing called creators curse? That it's sad that you and Bree cannot experience yes. Cafe One Hundred Eight yes. the way we do, the way yes. hundreds, if not thousands, do, right yes. in Pune City. Yeah. So what you've started, it's kind of a mini cultural movement. If you think about it, like I've, I've been, I've been a frequent visitor since three, four years now. Yeah. And I'm, I've been living the hashtag Cafe life since ten years now. So yeah. I've visited a lot of cafes. I've never felt this way. The way I always feel when I enter your place, and that's why I call it a cultural movement because I'm not the only one. Yeah. I mean, you know, there are people who are doing everything. Yeah, there was Starbucks. Yeah, there was blah blah blah, whatever. But it just feels different. So a lot of people want to get into cafe business. It's like it has become that end goal, right? You know, मुझे कैफे खोलने. Yeah. So right now, I want you to preach. Like, you know, <laughs> just 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 tell us everyone. Tell everyone that you know how did you do it, and what are the things to keep in mind. Look, um, when we first started, like we we didn't really like it came about from a po- like I always used to say to Bree saying that oh we were living in Australia this time and um, I always said to her that we'll go to India and do something there on our own because we had good jobs. Were you dating in or Australia? were you married back then? Um, bit of both. So since what we do you were, mean by bit of both? No, How can you be? <laughs> this this conversation was. Um, started when we were dating already, right, right, right. And then when we were married, the conversation continued. Right. But there was a point after we got married where I kept on saying, like, yeah, one day we'll do so something. So you got married in Australia, and then you moved to India. And India, we got married People both. Need to know also about in this, right? Bali, we also got People married in, Pune in Bali. People know you, but they don't know yeah, you, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So these things like come up in different conversations, and it's it's it just a natural kind of a. flow where you know you're curious you ask a question like i don't mind sharing anything right, about myself right. so um it comes up like people question but yeah we got married three times one in australia once in bali and then in india mm, nice and bri has kind of always been in this industry um all her life fnb yeah okay um and hospitality and she started working from the age of 13 which is kind of which the is normal for age them in <laughs> not australia for, you know <laughs> yeah and uh, one one day i went home and she came home from work and she said i know what i'm going to do like right um and she's a big like on goals and goal coaching okay she looks of, focused she looks focused yeah like it's so she worked for an organization called lululemon which is a big i think i'm um, of it yeah um, yoga clothing brand clothing yes um, yeah it's it's from lulu it's from canada okay. and she kind of worked with them opening the first few stores and so on right so anyway so their culture like a business culture and a people culture was goal setting mm. and it's a very individualistic approach where what do you want to do like where do you want to go like what do you need to be successful and they kind of build the people like that mm. and obviously along with all of her other experience that she had kind of learned over the years and gained over the years um she was very strong in goals and goal coaching and she had a goal of opening her own cafe hmm. 
and she had an epiphany one day and she came home she was like i'm going to open a cafe and she was unstoppable since oh, okay so this is really her baby right um as much as we do it together and but without her i would have never started this cafe sure is the kind of truth of the story right um so yeah like we she she came home one day she's like i'm going to start this cafe and my friends tell me this has been on my goals all my life and she's worked for numerous different cool places right. all along um her experience and across the world um and then she got really serious about it really quickly like right. she quit her job which was she was very good at um she started working for free at a friends cafe i'm like i don't know where this is going but this makes me this is all very uncomfortable yeah okay. in australia and i kept on like supporting her as much as i could and just like being optimistic and then one day she came home she's like i'm going to go to indian scout for properties i'm like okay hold on a minute <laughs> like i am not ready whatever train you're on right. you need to get off it for a minute <laughs> right. and let me catch up but she's like well i'm going next month you, right. you know you out you can come yeah, and you yeah. guys were married back then yeah, yeah we were married yeah. okay yeah we were just married i like the way she you know put yeah. the rings <laughs> this is kind of within around the 6 6 month mark since we got married it was all kind of changing right right like you can't really put your finger to it how you know like so wait a second she knows that her husband is from india yeah right she, who lives there yeah but she give you an ultimatum or whatever i am leaving in one month doing my own work yeah like i mean I, she's got a history with india and in, like even before we met she spent a lot of time so in anyway, india so she wasn't asking you to come along she was just telling you that i'm going to do this yeah she's like i would like for you to Boss come lady, but yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i'd like for you to come but if you're not going to come it's going to happen yeah. regardless so <laughs> i get it yeah. that's her style um and then we came and the first day we were scouting for properties we found a first location which was quite perfect yeah. and then it was like are you going to take take that leap of faith or are you just going to hold back and let this opportunity pass by right and we just took the leap of faith man like so we quit right. all our you know jobs and our belongings and packed it all up in a car and put it in storage and we took a flight out to india so she moved to india first um and i had to i spent a couple more months wrapping up our life okay. there still and finishing my job and you know like organizing our belongings this that and the other right. so she single handedly set up the entire cafe before i even got there and we are talking about the one in lane 6 in lane 6 yeah that was oh, the first yeah. iteration of our cafe essentially and that's how it all started it, i mean overall it's just been a beautiful journey it hasn't been easy so i'm not going to make it sound um um rosy hmm. but it's been the best thing we've done in our life hands down um and it's given us more than what we could ever imagine right um but it's also been the hardest thing we've done in our life so you know when you know people say follow your dreams this that and the other you know 100% but i think you also need to bring that attitude um every to the day, table every, every, day, every day every day week every day week on week month on month cuz the challenges never stop like right. you've you've put yourselves out there yeah and you are vulnerable cuz something so close to your heart is being put out on a plate right um for people to have opinions about right. and yes. there's hundreds yes. um thousands of people walking through those doors every week so it's a challenging situation to be in which you can't really um gauge or imagine or prepare for before you open the doors or anything so right. you know if you listen to podcasts of other you know great chefs around the world mm. and you know people who've started restaurants and cafes like no one can prepare you for that right so you have to be a fighter when you kind of you know put yourself yeah. out there cuz it's not going to be easy is the is the simplest way of describing oh, I it can yeah. i yeah. can imagine i can also you know you being at the top like of course i mean you have to take care of every single thing but you yeah. being on the top i was reading about all those people who work beyond the walls right the kitchen staff and yeah. all i mean it's just remarkable the yeah. way people don't realize what goes were you reading a book about this yeah yeah, yeah. i was i was it was orwell's book so these guys were mainly they used to work on daily wages as waiters yeah as waiters in france and this is 1930s based book down yeah. and out in paris and london yeah 
so this guy was so i got to know about all the kitchen staff and what they go through it's like one of the toughest jobs on yeah, this planet you 100%. can't deny that and people don't realize that yeah. they start early huge respect for not just your staff like yeah. everyone who yeah. works because it was an eye opener yeah so yeah i mean I, that was just very spontaneous i, I want to tell you this one small story right. about the industry in itself right when we were living in australia as students like we could work hmm. part time and stuff and i have always been kind of like an office job kind of a guy like yeah corporate y- yeah like more of that and i was kind of fit in that framework and enjoyed being that you get to a place you know you work a certain suits. number of hours yeah, yeah. i wore suits for many years yeah. but there was this one time when my friend wasn't going to be able to make his shift for right. work and he's like oh do you want to take this on and i knew he did something at an events place and i didn't have a full understanding of what it was about okay. i was excited i'm like on new challenge yeah, like yeah, yeah i'll uh, you know i'll be there so he's like be there at 4 pm right and just like the nice people to work for and they were so there was this big venue of where which could see it like Three to five hundred people, right? And it was a Greek wedding that mm. you know I arrived upon. Okay, and I was everything behind the scenes in the kitchen. Did you right? break plates? Ah, uh, yeah, there was some yeah. definitely some breaking of plate action mm. happening there, but they that celebrated. So every right. time you broke a plate, everyone like whoa yeah, that's and cheer and it's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wedding, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um. but i had to do everything from doing the dishes, dishes to stirring big pots of food to doing a lot of prep like cutting chopping peeling and um, um just other jobs you know just like we got some breaks but essentially i thought like it would be like a 6 hour shift or 8 yeah. hours or something but essentially 4 till like 7 o'clock was just getting ready 7 to 10 was 11 was the real service and then 11 midnight onwards was the wind down so it went on till 4 in the morning okay and it was nothing i had experienced before and i was so tired and i was like this is not for me like uh, my body is M- not must be an this. equalizer must be an equalizer like, it, it tells, must be yeah yeah it tells yeah. you a lot right but it's a little bit of a gate opener that i experienced but it was a great experience but right. you know brie still kind of is more kitchen and hands on hmm. and creative and even overall as such so right. she is the ceo and i'm more behind the scenes a little bit project management a little bit more cfo type of a role right um and i'm also good with people so do a bit of training so and you this are, and yes. that yeah. yeah yeah but still i mean you know there's always a fingerprint right every yeah business especially cafes and all they have their own identity so i also had this guy a friend uh, joy who started rasta in delhi and mumbai right oh, yeah. rasta the rasta yeah, 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 yeah. so in hoskas in, in hoskas yeah. exactly so that guy he on the podcast he said that you know uh, you just have to do your own thing you just can't copy someone else's yeah. so anyone anyway, i can i can uh, lease a huge space out right and i can you know uh, paint the walls pastel and you know say i'm a cool place cool mm-hmm. vibe whatever but i can't be you right so i that's what i really want to dig into like what was the drive like how did it turn out like this yeah. that everyone wants to just work chill at your place it's yeah. happening well to be honest we also can't like quite describe it put our finger to it in in that <laughs> sense because it's answer. it's it's a little bit more of a happening than a doing hmm. so we didn't set out to um achieve something like this or make it look like this or have this vibe or whatever right so the cafe is what it is today hmm. because of all the people that have walked through those doors the people who work for us and obviously us as well who kind of stand behind it all to make it all kind of kind of flow in a specific way right but i feel there's so many different variables that has led into the cafe being what it is today so almost from one point of view you never really know right what the secret ingredient yeah. is but what you can do is essentially um be true to yourself right you know be be authentic dig deep you know like really like it's very easy to say to see a little bit of 
I don't know if it's quite the glamour or something else, but it's e- really easy to be attracted to that and say, hey man, like I want to do something like that. Yes. Or I want to cook or I can host people or I can manage a small cafe. But I think the original intent behind all of these things need to be uh, a bit deeper than that. Like, right. you know, like I, if I were to start the cafe by myself, right. I don't think it would have been successful. Like it was Bree's original intent or right. that, you know, like strong energy from the start that has mm. led it into being what it is today. So I feel like authenticity, being true to yourself, you know, b- bringing something really valuable and unique um, to the table is essential because um, you can't just be another place doing the same stuff. Like I think we're, especially in today's day and age, like we've got all the tools to um, dig deeper, you know, ask the big questions of what's the purpose of life and yeah. see if it is aligned to what you want to pursue in life or right. Do you want to be like one year, three or five years in being like, Are, you know, this didn't work out or right. it's not filling my cup or I feel like it's really essential, especially in this day and age to ask the big questions. Like if I had to do this for the rest of my life, hmm. is it is this something worth pursuing or is it just like, oh, I like to go to this cafe or I like that cafe in Paris or Melbourne or New York or whatever. And I want to kind of replicate that and do. So I feel like this whole authenticity and originality and genuineness should come through. Like, and that comes from going within, you know, like finding your true self as well, like asking the tough questions to yourself and also asking people around you, like close ones to, you know, bounce ideas, like people you really value and you think, know you as a person and I think you should definitely chase your dreams and right. go for it but I think there's a lot of groundwork that is essential before you actually go ahead and do that which is not time bound or place bound or this that and the other but I think more importance should be given more thought should be given more effort should be given before you kind of actually offer something that you think is valuable to the community at large right Hmm. makes sense yes also i want to talk about infinity that Mm. we will get into because i've been you know we've we've been having these conversations yeah Yeah. so before that i want you to tell me about that cool ass mala that you're wearing like what is about (laughs) because i asked you before i started recording this is very special just take it out yeah why not no i mean don't take it out just yeah okay it has yeah so what is that yeah you know so this i got in rishikesh okay and this is kind of blessed by one of my teachers and okay. that's Muji. Okay. So a little bit about Muji is that um, he's a spiritual teacher who is based out of Portugal right now. Okay. Um, um, it's called Monte Sahaja, their, right. their, their um, place in Portugal and he's originally from Jamaica. He's lived in London for he's many cool years. Dude. And he's a cool dude. He he's is not like other cool. spiritual he's the people. man. Yes. Yeah. And um, yeah, like so my journey about kind of finding answers to life and kind of um, going deeper within myself led me to him Mm -hmm. and um, I found him on YouTube initially and there was like just the more I heard him speak um, the more I was engaged in what he was about and his message and then quite organically it happened that February was the month he kind of comes to India every year or most years. To Rishikesh. Yeah, to Rishikesh. And um, he does like a one month, a couple of months season. And it was kind of coming up and it was quite easy for me to kind of find myself there. So I did go for a week and that's where I got this from him. So which is quite a cool story. Yeah, like he's blessed it. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. It was quite amazing. And... I just like it. It's sandalwood. It's cool. It smells. <laughs> it smells amazing. And I, I would just wear such stuff like yeah. jab beads. I, there's something yeah. in, I, I used to buy whenever I used to go to um, McLeod Ganj or yeah. Ladakh. Yeah. So no one gifted it to me. That yeah. blessed it. Uh, yeah. But you know, you just yeah. you, you feel that vibe, right? Hundred percent. So Rishikesh has a very um, very 
special place in my heart. Right. Um, and I've only been there once. Okay. And that was this year in February. Right. So it was the week of Shivratri. Right. And um, well, I've been on a little bit of a quest where, you know, I'm, I, I kind of find... Walk me through. Yeah. So, um, well, it all began um, a number of years ago, like 17, 18 years ago. I started meditating. I was introduced to this breathing and meditation technique called the Sudarshan Kriya, right. which is um, with, with brought to this planet and to the mankind by Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. Um, who, who runs the, um, who founded the Art of Living organization. And um, since then, it's just kind of has its own momentum and has has its own direction, which I've just kind of organically kind of been open to. So, you know, you get taught this amazing tool that you can use on a daily basis at okay. home, which just kind of sets the tone for the day. This is like 15, 20 minutes that you just give yourself any time of the day. And what do you do in those 15, 20 so minutes? So it's, it's, it's a breathing technique that okay. is quite unique and specialized, which is t- taught to you on a program okay. that they run, which is called um, Art of Breathing. Right. Um, and... So is it like holding your breath for so a it's long? a it's a full on sequence and right. it's 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 not something that can be you know like um, transferred to you right now. Okay, it's like people are trained to be able to. T- it's very powerful and very profound. Right. So a lot of cool stuff like you know firework kind of stuff can happen. So it's done in a specific environment. So right. it is. Um, That's fascinating. One of those. So it is. A kriya mm-hmm. that taps into like our ancient knowledge, right. um, which has been designed for modern humans like and this you just and I. Breathing. This Some is just breathing. Man. Okay. But I mean, it's not just breathing. Um, from the outside, it'll look like just breathing. Yeah. But it's very profound, very right. deep, and beyond, in my opinion, beyond what mind can understand. So, right. from if you if you try and think about it from the perspective of the human mind, right. then you will think, oh, you're just doing a bunch of breathing exercises. A guy like me, right? We'll be like, no, okay, like oxygen supply, no, yeah, something's happening. Okay, you're getting it's, high. It's, it's, it. a, it's a very common thing of coming to it, but that's why I say the experience is essential. Right. Because... Right. 100%. You can't really describe experience. You know, like, um, you wake up this morning and you've had a dream even if you're lying next to your beloved, you can't really translate or draw that dream in front which right. you've experienced to your beloved even though it's so intimate and so close. So it's similar, like experiences, especially spiritual experiences, right. cannot really be um, explained or right. talked about. Imparted so, upon other people. Yeah. Exactly. And that's why, you know, teachers will even say, like, don't talk about your experience. So right. I try and, you know, sure, sure, stay sure. close yeah, to yeah. that. But it is, and that's why it's so good that you get to have your own experience and you should go ahead and experience it yourself. So my, Brie also teaches um, these workshops. Okay. And now they're also like via Zoom, which is super cool. Otherwise, you have to go to a certain place at a certain time mm. to be able to experience that. But the profoundness of it, I cannot really describe in words. So okay. it was a very special thing that happened to me quite earlier on in right. my life. Um, my father recommended that I did that. And I went in with like, why not? Like, yeah. you know, what am I going to do with my time on these specific days that is going to be more valuable than this? Right. So I found myself there and I got to experience it. And then there are subsequent other techniques that you can learn if that's what you're looking for. And there's silence retreats and there's advanced meditation practices. There's an asana practice if that's what you want and so on and so forth. So there's a lot that you can, from a tools point of view, that you can, you've got access to. Right. So that's where it all started. I went to Australia <coughs> after that. And um, I continued, there was a co- beautiful community in Australia as well that I connected. I made some amazing friends there through this whole mm. community. Um, and we had a great time, man. So Shri Shri also used to visit Australia, which is a very nice environment for, 
him to come and be in but also for his you know students or right. devotees to go and meet him because it's not like india if you have to differentiate between since you know i have just read i was never into you know spiritual leaders not leaders but spiritual men these yeah. enlightened people souls uh i know i'm going to put a polarized question right now but how will you differentiate between someone like osho and shri shri i wouldn't differentiate you wouldn't no because okay. um isn't one really i won't use the term i'll tell you why radical. i wouldn't differentiate one very radical and one very calm and you know i i don't know osho enough okay to make a comment like i haven't read his books i haven't watched his hmm. videos um i'm a part of the kp kind of community that's why where, i asked yeah. you what do you gauge when you see a lot of maroon robes in your cafe like how do you differentiate between yourself and those people i don't differentiate because i feel um every individual hmm. be it like a fully self realized you know entity right i mean or versus anyone else i feel it's a unique representation of nature okay. essentially like and comparing like even if we were comparing you and me right it just doesn't make sense because right. you can never compare right and essentially what i believe who we truly are is just an expression of who in you and i are but isn't their expression a bit clannish because i personally felt so so a clannish or cultish or not is dependent on your personal opinion so this is i'll i'll just like to connect this to what i just said before where your world and my world cannot be different your right. experience and my experience of this world cannot be the same, same. same it's yeah. completely unique right so the way you perceive world hmm. the way you perceive yourself right and the others right now there's we'll just try and get a little bit of a perspective right okay. there's a world right there's you right. and then there's others right okay so others is essentially you know everyone from the gurus to politicians to um your friends and your family and people you work with and people you like and don't like that's all the others right you are you yeah and then the world is the world like in its all entirety like everything that you perceive okay. is your world okay everything that i perceive is my world and when we say others we just mean people other humans for the sake of this conversation right, yes right, yeah, right, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. cuz like essentially in life right. you wake up yeah. you're by yourself right. you know then you've got plans to meet this that and the other yeah. and that's what happens right and then there's everything that exists for you is your world right so like if we had to talk about you know life right you know we can kind of talk around these concepts cuz right. it just gives a clearer perspective of what right, we're talking right, yeah. about so how i see the these entities essentially um self realized or not like liberated or not um is will be very unique to how you see it and mm-hmm. cult or not as well so often they will say like yeah if you want to call us a cult call us a cult but we are a happy cult like we yeah. yeah. we're making a positive impact on people's life and positive can just mean like you and i feeling a little less stressed right. by doing these breathing techniques yeah. or meditations or being in a certain environment where there's chanting happening or yes. whatever now it's very now this is a very um easy phenomenon to take place hmm. where like others or like from their perspective we are the others and from our perspective they are the others right. it's very easy to perceive the other as this or that right you know yeah. cultish or not cultish like cool or not like happy or not or yeah. whatever but i feel like that brings me to quite a fundamental um principle of this subject right and that is that is the theory of consciousness essentially that you know on some level hmm we all the same right you know so essentially me saying something about you hmm. or you thinking something about me or you and i collectively thinking something about someone else hmm. is only conceptual okay yes. and cannot be 
cannot be um, set in stone essentially because what I think and you think is completely different. So coming back to your question, I don't see it what anyone like oh and this has taken me some time trust me so I'm, because these aren't regular thoughts right you actually have to peel each layer right to go I guess this. so but yeah. I'm kind of you know opening my kind of set of experiences and thoughts and ideas in this conversation um, and over the years as of today like so short answer is yes. Like, did I think of this, that and the other is like, oh, what are you guys doing? And like exactly. frowned upon yeah, yeah. all of that. Yes. Like I've been right. through that. But my perspective today is that um, or the choice I have made and the perspective I have arri- I've r- arrived upon is that essentially we're kind of the same, hmm. you know. So if there is no you and I hmm. and if there is not me and him and her and this and that. If it's all part of the nature right. that is all encompassing, right. you know, then the question of who's doing what, if right. it's right or wrong, if it's cool or not, if it's, you know, like harmful or not, is kind of all a bit relative. Right. So, you know, we can say like, Are, you know, he's doing this and he's done that and this is what has happened. But essentially in the scheme of things, right. like if you... In the scheme of Larger things picture. of la- the largest picture, right. the from the point of infinity, being. just being, yeah, yeah, from the from the point of ultimate consciousness, right. these questions don't come up. Yeah, and I have over time kind of tried to calibrate myself right. to that frequency where you know, and that's essentially what everyone is doing. Right, like everyone wants more peace of mind Mm. or more stillness or less conflict in your head or less ups and downs so you just want to like oh I just want to feel good you know I just want to be happy Mm. everyone wants to be happy if I offered you a little more happiness right now you know would you say no to it I I might yeah that's very subjective but I might yeah depending on what I I need (laughs) I mean I'm not giving it to you but if you could be like a better version of yourself like I can I can kind of change the verbiage kicks in life but I understand what you're saying yeah, and like, yes and okay. we move from strength to strength or yes. this to that and we strive to be better yes. entities and you know you work out and you look after yourself that's too like it's self improvement but um, in this uh, mainly it's ego boost for most <laughs> but it's still I mean everything is kind but of when we start thinking like good, you think then it becomes like okay I want to elevate my quality of life right you know so yeah the, yeah i want to elevate that then it becomes uh, a, a healthy pursuit i would yeah. say right now it's ugly yeah because you know people people have forgotten like i mean to remain healthy yeah. and longevity yeah you know it's very easy you don't have to fucking do a lot to do yeah. that you don't have to eat six times a day to do that yeah but when the moment aesthetics came into play, right? I yeah. want to look like that. I want to look at myself looking like that. Yeah. That fucked everyone up. Yeah. And I think it's it's a very natural phenomenon. And I think you've kind of used a couple of words which I'd like to kind of touch upon and, you know, um, go there. But for me, from my personal experience, I found myself, you know, like I was born here and right. grew up here. But I had this thing about like, you know, you you're born to certain parents right. okay you get given a name yeah. you get given taught a language you get fed certain type of food yeah and there's a certain environment that you yes. kind of exposed to then you grow up a little bit you get introduced to your immediate yeah. family and you treat this person like that and you speak to this person like that right then like after a certain number of years you go to school where you're exposed to a larger number of people, mm. your teachers and your friends and this, that and the other. Now, right. that does more in conditioning your yes. mind essentially. Yes. And this conditioning I refer to is happening all the time, is happening right now, yeah. has happened before. Like the X number of years that we've been alive in this bo- in these bodies we have been constantly subjected to conditioning. Yes. Okay. You and I wouldn't be speaking the language um, or using the vocabulary we use had it been for the conditioning. Hmm. Okay. So let's just park conditioning for now being just 
essentially the human experience right. you know that we're absorbing constantly yes. and being who we are as a direct outcome of that hmm. and now this conditioning has essentially led us to believing this that and the other and um speaking the truth we or whatever we think is right or wrong and that's why we do form opinions but you also mentioned um the ego right like it's to boost my ego yes. you say but what happens like what happened for me was like through experience like you know like i went to school mm-hmm. and obviously there's boys and girls and you want to look you know good and you yeah. want to impress certain people and you want to get marks and then you want to get into good college and yeah. this that and the other <laughs> all of that yeah. all of that you know like yeah. when, you know all of these factors come into play um but you are moving from a to b right. always like in my and that was my experience where you know in the 10th standard you want to you know score a certain number of marks so to speak yes, and you want to yes. get into a certain college because already by that time you've already formed a self image yes. like i wanted to get into symbiosis because right. i felt like you know that's, that's cool my place, place yeah, you know exactly. like and you know this self image right is essentially the same as in my understanding as the ego okay is the same as an identity or a person that right. we become as a function of this conditioning that we exposed to through our life right. okay so then you want to go to college and then i did and i met more people and you know um got a job afterwards and did that and wasn't satisfied so this is a very common theme like satisfaction or contentment hmm. which is essentially missing right. okay so we'll also like yeah. um so that's why i say a to b that's why i say growth that's why you like always like want to go from um you know this place to that yeah. place so something very interesting happened to me and then um on this journey mm. of mine so college and then job here and then i wanted to do more and i wanted to get a masters degree i went to australia and so on but in this on a subtler level a very interesting phenomena started to take place and i started to become aware towards it mm. and that is it's essentially like we perceive life or i perceive life um more outwardly hmm. you know i had created a self image of this is yes. who rajan is this is what rajan does and doesn't do this is how he looks and feels and speaks and all of that right. and i was just walking this planet with that self image right. that i had created of myself but what happened very interestingly through these practices and which i later found out how it all works because right. it's very it's a very precise subject hmm there's not like everything has been in my opinion discovered and documented which right. i'm only now accessing and starting to understand right. but what was happening was essentially this outward perspective was starting to become more and more inward because what we're doing is hmm. essentially we're finding answers in the world which i found to be already existent within me all right. these answers were within me right. and then it's kind of a hack like all of these questions that come up you're like i'm not going to seek these answers i'm not going to seek more money or mm. better jobs or better looking partners or better looking friends or having a greater time or having these amazing luxury holidays but essentially let me find these answers within myself and that's came from like silence retreats and you know just um and don't you think that overpowering the feeling of regret is a key to this mindset because you know okay you want such job that pays you seven figures mm. but you can't have it right now because you're not up to the mark so either you let go that why to stress on it and you know give myself a bad time let it be i'm enjoying right now i'm satisfied right yeah. now that also leads to you know overpowering regret because yeah. regret will be there okay shit you could have you know yeah. bought a better car yeah. or a fancy rolly or yeah. whatever but yeah. then you tell yourself no i'm happy you tell yourself that no i'm satisfied yeah. so that telling yourself yeah. part right i think that's very so do you suck it in like what do you do you accept defeat or are you in peace like there's a thin line between that right so that's a very interesting question because this is these are the questions i was asking myself right why do i experience regret right why do i experience anxiety and fear right and disappointment and worry and all of these human emotions that are 
we all experience mm-hmm. okay so and so the first question i ask myself i'm saying this happened to me that happened to me you know like i want a better job and i'm not happy with this and i'm not happy with that but all of it starts with one thing mm-hmm. and that's the i yeah okay sure yeah. so <laughs> and that's what i realized and it yeah. was a big turning point for me yeah, that right. and that is what um you know recent spiritual masters have spoken about very clearly and it's now this is kind of like a big you know cornerstone and a concept to get your head around and like it was for me to understand that all the problems in the world mm. are within me right. like are relevant to the i mm. okay so i am unhappy i am not satisfied i want this i want that if i don't get this then that mm. and all of that right. so a common denominator is the i, I. so then once you realize that um the phenomenon that i is or i is also referred to as the same self image right. the same ego and that becomes the center point of your self inquiry right you know and self inquiry essentially being one of the spiritual practices they also call it the practiceless practice which was brought to planet earth by ramana maharishi in the recent past you should look up you know is this the book that you told me about I 198 did. book no that was the so patanjali's yoga sutras right, but right. ramana maharishi um was one of the most popular sages that has walked this planet um hmm. um in the last century and um, he has a very strong message that everyone should kind of look into hmm. and there have been subsequent teachers all around the world and the subject of the study being um advaita right um duality non duality non duality advaita yeah. okay yeah. advaita yeah. being duality right. and advaita being non duality right. right. yeah um and that kind of became like my practice right. in the recent past right. like i started off with doing a lot of meditation mm. a lot of kriyas um some reading but it my intellect wasn't ready really to absorb these right. scriptures and this and that but i just found myself kind of going here and there on my explorative journey mm. but in the recent past i came across across muji who is also from that right um, essentially lineage yeah. yeah so ramana maharishi's uh, um, student was papa ji who was also self realized and was based in papa lucknow ji. papa ji yeah the, papa ji has uh, he's he's got some stuff on youtube and but he calls himself papa ji that's his uh, no his student started calling him that it's like a it's a cool um, name yeah it's so he's cool beautiful he's yeah. beautiful man Papaji. and he's 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 very very powerful mm. kind of a nice. being who's been and given a lot to this world really um and then papa ji student was um muji who you know on his his journey of self exploration found himself reading books about indian you know masters and found himself in delhi then rishikesh and then in lucknow where he found what he was looking for right so yeah. how did all of this lead to because i know since we've been talking recently that you know a lot of thoughts have been entering your head how did this lead to lead to infinity that idea you said that you wanted to talk about like because i've always spoken to you and bri and i felt it and you've told me that you don't believe in expanding like you know franchise like okay one yeah. night oh we're going to open one in bombay because yeah. people will dig it if yeah. you open one in goa yeah. i know because people visit there and they get the vibe right? your yeah. vibe is the vibe that people want yeah but you said that you aren't that interested in opening another 108 or yeah. whatever but then you often talk about infinity so, so again along this? this along this journey like yeah. you know we went through the whole motions of like wanting to open more outlets and this and that but essentially again like underneath it all mm. um was this like um journey of self self exploration yeah. where i did and that was the kind of subtle uh, transformation that was happening within me right. and i did find um a great level of uh, contentment right so within that like i don't feel that i want i want to go from a to b or 1 to 4 mm. or 1 to 10 like that desire does not exist anymore right. for me um i feel 
fully content right. with what we currently have right and we are essentially part of a community mm. and on a daily basis we are creating value for the yes. community and yes. i feel that's enough and that's a very big thing that is missing in the world today and that's like everyone thinks including myself like yeah. uh, you know i've been in this place many a times that you just think you're not enough but i feel like mm. the transformation that has happened for me is like this is enough Right. And that's what it's led that's to. Beautiful. That's yeah, beautiful. Yeah, that's what it's yeah, led yeah. to that we don't need to do more. Like what we can do is just bring more depth to it. Yeah. Um to what we It's also currently envious do. for people who aren't there, right? In a way, in a way. Or inspiring, like you know, like should I be. hope it's Yeah, that's another way. perspective, yeah. right? Perspective. Yeah. It has to be yeah. inspiring. It yeah. should be inspiring rather than yeah. envious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sure. Yeah, cuz envy doesn't get you uh you know out of your you bed with yeah, yeah like it's it's essentially again like that feeling like i'm not enough like yeah. he's got it i don't yeah. and that feeling of lack right. rather than you know you being able to use it as a tool like that's very inspiring yeah. like i want to associate with someone like that and that's what happened to Stunned me with my stones, teachers yeah, yeah, yeah like let's do something you're like oh what what is he doing or she doing yeah. and how can i um you know be learn from mm. this person or what can i gain or like and so on and so forth i feel like that's the attitude that we need to carry out like how can i learn or right. how can i teach or how can i be a specific way that's going to collectively you know uplift but how do you feel when you know like you're jealous or you're feeling like right. i don't have this other you don't feel great like yeah. and that's where again contentment comes and that's where again like meditation has played a big part in my life right yeah so still waiting for the infinity part like yeah infinity more, unless infinity, it's a secret right now that no it's not it's not it's not so like in the whole kind of business experience of us being like 108 is essentially um one being the oneness zero being nothingness and eight being infinity okay. you know so it it's a numeric oh, representation I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah i thought it's the 108 beat 108 it beats it is but it's also like you know the distance between the moon it, and it, earth repeat, repeat that for me once one being so one is oneness zero is nothingness okay. and eight being infinity. infinity oh wow um Now so i'm going to look at 108 in a different way yeah like yeah. you initially like we all think we are one yeah. as somebody and then you know through this experience we may realize not right. everyone does but may realize we are actually nothing right and what might happen which what they're saying is in who came up with the ultimate huh? who came was i think you? breed it yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah breed it definitely breed it breed is awesome and then it kind of leads you to infinity right. and you know it's always been a part of what we do but out of the lockdown what happened was um i just I'm a project guy like right. I get all these ideas and I want to do everything and more often than not I'm trying to do too many things right. at the same time but um infinity was born hmm. out of this kind of interesting phase of life we've been through of right. you know lockdown this that and the other um and yeah like it was a way of kind of sharing what we have hmm. with in a bigger way right. like without having to go to bombay or goa or wherever else like we want to be able to share the experience of what we're about right. in a kind of bigger way so hmm. that's coming sometime i mean we've done a few things with infinity right. it's infinity delhi um is what we're talking I'm about and introduce meet i've always told you <laughs> um we'll see what happens man we we kind of not putting kind of too many rules and restrictions hmm. on ourselves and that's also what has happened um due to the lockdown that you kind of learn to push your boundaries a little bit when more when i saw because you didn't announce it right you just sent uh, that uh, you shared that you know broadcast messages on whatsapp that you do for pizzas right so suddenly yeah. i see pepperoni yeah. I, mean, i see the word pepperoni i'm like what yeah. the hell yeah. are they like promoting vegan that yeah. uh, for meat pepperoni stuff But yeah no, i mean you guys are doing meat now so the reason why we weren't doing it was because brie is vegetarian right. and that's kind of plays into everything hmm. else that we just wanted to create a vibration right. and brie was vegetarian so you know being true to her kind of work environment she was like i won't be able to serve meat and i'm not going to mm. and i'm like fair enough like you have to be 100% true to yourself right. 
more than and this is again tying up to you know what we were initially talking about like you can't just put whatever on the menu because that's what's going to sell or that's mm. what people will want yeah you want to serve what you're going to what's going to make you happy serving day in day out for years to come right. and that's what we did but an interesting that has happened through infinity is like our partner and chef akshay right he the guy who's always busy with you baking pizzas yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, he's wow. he's amazing and um are you I, i should get him as well one day or the other yeah he I'll, he I'll is to, super camera shy so good luck with that oh okay um <laughs> well, i'll try and convince him for a non video i just need to spike his kind of a thing <laughs> yeah so um he he is he worked for his work for michelin star restaurants in nice france nice, and spain nice. and brings incredible amount of experience and he likes to cook with meat and all of akshay, this kind of yaksha yes we'll start with a shout out no right yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, yeah. he's a bit of shout a legend akshay, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah um and yeah like we're not close to anything so right. we're like why not and we yeah. tried it out and it's it's still in project kind of a phase where we don't know in a concrete way mm. where infinity is leading but we just thought why not like you know it's yeah. like and you try it out and then you find out essentially and it's been what it has been and it'll be what it'll be in the future right. so we'll we'll kind of keep it a little small mystery around it and that's, we'll see that's where how it goes it's, yeah. that's how it's, it's very exciting though like the original intent of infinity delhi is to bring the highest quality ingredients to people's homes mm. um which is not easily accessible so mm. currently what happens in the industry is that um there is very specific people who know what to buy and where to buy from right. whereas we kind of want to open it up to the masses and um i am super interested like through my previous ventures i've got a business in australia and i was really passionate about working with smaller communities who right. do artisanal stuff right and that's the original intent behind this like connecting mm. these small artisanal communities to wider masses and figure out like all the interim kind of steps to kind of make it a cohesive like a nice experience for everyone and be it coming in once in a week for pizza right. at the cafe or maybe a musical event at the cafe or just like a hmm. meal being delivered to you or some top quality ingredients being delivered to you that are not really easily accessible right. um to the masses so that's the original intent and it'll be what it'll be so we're very excited about where it's leading but we kind of in the early stage of really formulating what it's going to look and feel like yeah now yeah before i ask you about your take on hallucinogens <laughs> and can 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 in this i wanted to talk about that to you 100% yeah. but i yeah i also wanted to share you know after talking to you right now and always whenever we do it's just that now i've realized why your uh you know i won't even call it venture anymore why one of it is so successful is because you know your vibe your the uh, quest for answers right and yours and breeze it has percolated down to your staff yeah. that's what we experienced because yeah. you might not be there every single day yeah. but whenever we enter right so whenever we look at bipin or the boys right mm. we feel the same yeah. we feel we feel at home so yeah. i think it's because of I'm not sure whether you've schooled them that way that you've uh, taken a group class and told yeah. them, or maybe you've done that. However, it works. Uh, so this or, is, or, or you yeah. know, took out the belt. Oh, whatever. Yeah. That was a joke. But but you know what I really want to say is that this is one of the main ingredients of you know yeah. your success. Also, if you want to open a bar, if you really want to get into it, your vibe should get percolated down to your staff. Yeah, that's what we experience at one of it. Yeah. So this is more of the same of what I was saying earlier, like. it was it wasn't like in a schooling format but essentially conditioning is constantly happening like yeah. if you were to come and spend time with, at the cafe right. like you are being conditioned you are being exposed mm. to a certain mm. vibration a certain energy or certain environment that is contagious like right. and that's who bri is and who i am that we wanted to bring a certain experience right. more than a certain product right. or a certain service you yeah. know it's an experience where it's friendly yeah. people feel at home people have a good time people can socialize meet new people 
is good music good food not just a place where you get kombucha you know, I, yeah <laughs> exactly or like you that's know like good. it's it's not a limited thing that we sell this, this is good for my meat. gut <laughs> yeah yeah like that's just a added bonus right, yeah. bonus points yeah but from an experience point of view like that's what we wanted and then yeah. over the years we have you know trained them like you know like in our culture it's very um easy to stare at people you yeah. know you find something out of the ordinary and, and i find myself doing yeah. it like you tend to stare you know like and you know from that to like you know conversational stuff and um just like etiquettes this that and the yeah. other and just making people more comfortable and just being yeah. nice and being just ex- being accepted nice. it's, it's very eventually. yeah and and acceptance yes right, 100% right. equality and just like everyone being the same really like not that this is this and that you know he is that or she is that or whatever like obviously we get all sorts of people walking through the doors <laughs> <Sure>. but <laughs> but i think that's the challenge we have signed up for right. yeah. like being able to um consistently just be nice to one bad experience just nice don't name the person you don't have to name anyone but one um, bad experience again like i i f- i know i know you're going to give me a deep <laughs> <laughs> spiritual answer on that but now i really want to okay, okay, okay. black and white this one i'll like, tell you one happened. i'll tell you one this is a that recent that fucker blah blah, yeah. blah blah i think this this is a recent one like we went from our old cafe to the new cafe right. and we've put like a blood sweat and tears into like just getting this place ready and opening the doors right. to our people and then there's this very very peculiar um, person who walks through the doors and this is one of the very first days of being open right and we're like all excited yeah. and like people are walking through the doors and this person is walked in and he's just looking around and he's a little bit sus and i'm not quite sure so i just walk up to him with the right. biggest smile on my right. face i'm like hey welcome like so nice to see you in our new place thank you for coming right what do you think and he goes it's rubbish what the hell it's awful like i hate it <laughs> i cannot stand it i'm like i thought i like hang on a minute i think is he joking but he's not a funny kind of a person from memory he's like i don't like anything here and i'm like i'm like i i couldn't like it was so shocking to me mm-hmm. that i'm like and like i'm a human yeah, so you have you feelings know, too <laughs> i I've, i've got feelings and whatever had happened like it was a big transition for us multiple challenges that we worked through and we still are yeah it's a big step into you know whatever we were venturing into and this guy just walks through the doors and completely like shatters everything that we worked <laughs> towards and as much as i'd like to like kind of you know be unshakable <laughs> and like like this is a pretty big deal then yeah and then i just like tried to accept what he had said i'm like mm. and obviously like um it affected me and i so? i just found myself saying man i'm sorry that that's your experience but right. um i guess not everything everything that's is not heavy. for everyone that's heavy and that's, that's what i said everything is not for everyone so yeah. i think it's i guess it's your choice if right. you want to come back or not right but we we love truly love and that's what i said to him as well like we're really proud and we really love what has been created yeah. and if it's not for you it's not for you man like i'm sorry about your experience but that's all there is cuz right. not everything is for everyone sure. and um, we've we've kind of learned to come to that place as well but that was one of um, you know our difficult experiences right. and there's many others but like this is one of the reasons that ones. was that was scarring that was yeah. like, because you yeah. feel it right now and, I, and i felt it right and now. and i to and but he came back i got offended but, but this is this is the funny part like he came back you know although so i then my analysis of it is like there's something beyond like and again like it leads me to the question like who's speaking even like who's saying these things and hmm. naturally like if from a natural state of mind mm. people are not saying these things so you know i have kind of developed this um way of being essentially is like giving people a benefit of doubt you know like saying i don't know what happened in your day before you walked through the door yeah. and i don't know like what's happening for you or what state of mind you're in or this that and the other so i do like to give people benefit of the doubt or you call it forgiveness or openness or whatever right and that's what i did like and 
I said and I just said like it's your choice and right. you know like we love what we're doing and then he's like cool cool this that and the other and then he came back multiple times still like because his friends used to like coming yeah. there and you know like someone you must might have, just be you, the second time when he entered you must have been like mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know like actions speak for themselves yeah. so he he kind of you know came back and was com- very nice all of a sudden and i guess realized you know like yeah. that he was very nice on that specific occasion so he had a bad day before yeah. that yeah and it's cool we yeah. all do yeah yeah sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah coming back to yeah mm. so the question is that i i, I mean i'm not going to complain about the laws in india uh, uh, regarding cannabis and other hallucinogens mm. but you know if if i talk about this to my dad right he'll be immediately you know he'll just put it down he'll put his foot down and he'll be like you know drugs blah 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 yeah. stay away because sure there's a because when when cartels get involved but do you do you know that that's what your dad will say or is that what you think cuz i've done this with my dad recently i've oh, spoken no, no, about no, this he says that he says okay. that he will be like you know he'll be like he is a complete i will be the one in the conversation i'll be tell i'll be saying that that you know forget about the medicinal purposes forget about you know that let it be on for recreation in india mm-hmm. i mean it's a good thing and that's when dad gets really that you know it has ruined lives and then i get into the properties of cannabis and he's like fuck you you idiot you don't understand it's about you know you know when he talks about all the peddlers smuggling money and then there are people dying killing each other for so that is wrong so i think there needs to be a systemic revolution in a way to bring these things but that's not what i really want to talk about because yeah. there are people talking about it every day what yeah. i really want to talk about is that you know people out there in the states they are having i i don't know they are having experiences that we can only dream of legally yeah. you know they are having these dmt sessions and there's this thing called toad that mike tyson often talks about on his podcast which I, they extract something from a poison venomous toad skin yeah. and make something that gives you i don't know yeah. what i mean but it has it has to be done under guidance like mm-hmm. there has to be an expert present yeah. but you know the zone they go into when when they come out they experience something you know that i cannot explain right now yeah. because you know we aren't we're just so away from it yeah so what's your take on that and what do you think about hallucinations in general so see first of all i'd like to mention so this is recently um i've been reading the patanjali yoga sutras right okay and there's a mention of aushadi aushadi so medicines right. okay aushadi has been mentioned in there right. now it doesn't go into this that and the other right. but let's just like kind of consider that for one right. second and then there's been commentaries that have been written about the yoga sutras right translated from sanskrit to english hmm. okay i found this very interesting right and my friends find this topic in general very interesting so so that's one mention it's right. been mentioned people have spoken about it this that and the other so what is more important for me is hmm. the intention behind doing these things right okay so from my perspective the intention is growth is okay. you call it spiritual growth or you know there's talk about spiritual awakening and there's that and the other hmm. okay and i can only share like what from my experience in kind of my on my journey um so very clearly it's been mentioned like different ways of spiritual attainment or spiritual growth or moving through hmm. this kind of subject of study right one of them is medicines right. another one is chanting like right. chanting mantras okay there is tapas which is essentially um you know just doing practices or putting your body and mind through hmm. this that and the other there is meditation there is like five different things but what they also see is tapas and meditation being something that if you get if you embed those um techniques or tools within you hmm. will take you all the way right okay whereas medicines or whatever these substances hmm. we refer to will essentially um support the journey right but can't be the only thing or if um that you use right. which can be very interesting hmm. now 
I'll bring another perspective. So they a friend of mine catalyze the reaction in a way. Yeah. Right. But again, also it's such a these substances are so powerful. Hmm. Okay. And what you are essentially doing is when you make a decision to use one of these substances is essentially you subject yourself to random possibilities hmm. that are not going to be um in your um you know per view of experience right. in daily life right, right now i'm a risk manager right okay so it's a certain risk you're taking on hmm. if you want to if you have the risk appetite to have a certain experience hmm. or not i can't judge right. you can be the only judge yeah. if i can or not i can decide for myself right. so there's a little bit of a calculated risk there hmm. okay who you doing it where you doing it how much experience is there at the table right. uh, wherever this experience is going down but just kind of focusing on the medicinal kind of aspects of it a little bit is essentially like again like recreation or not it's a very thin line mm-hmm. like you can have a prescription to consume cannabis in the US or Canada or even recreation now you walk into a store and buy whatever you want and mm-hmm. this that and the other is a very thin line which we won't talk about necessarily right, right, it's essentially yeah. like do you have access or not right. and how much access you have and should you or should you not have that right. access now i have a friend who is suffering from insomnia and right. she went to a specific place um in somewhere in america where okay. you know there was psilocybin and there was like a medical professional with help proper setup the the medicine is essentially properly tested um, qualified the dosage is like right. quite specific are they vaping it through vaporizers no psilocybin mushrooms is kind of just edible oh, i thought we were talking about uh, medical uh, med- medicinal marijuana no uh-huh. this is okay. um, mushrooms okay so then um, it's like a treatment right and i'm not qualified to you know sure. like medicinally speak right, how right. it functions and how it yes. doesn't but from what i've read and seen and experienced i know that it can have benefits hmm. at the same time it's not for everyone okay you know if your mind is not strong enough to go through whatever experience is on offer essentially that is again just a catalyst right okay what will the center point of it all is really the mind have you seen fear and loathing in las vegas johnny no. depp he no. plays the good old author hunter thompson no so they ride and they stack their car with everything up or down was everything and they are seeing uh, yeah. dragons and bats so yeah. i mean yeah. and there was one guy who was actually losing it losing it yeah. they've shown that yeah. it's a beautiful movie you should watch yeah. it once yeah so uh, coming back to what you were saying that can you handle it can you handle the substance exactly and are you ready for it as well and there's certain in my opinion there's certain qualifying factors that should okay. be seriously thought about right. it's not like you know like here there and everywhere like you can right. just it's not it's it needs to be taken a little more seriously right where it's not like you know something that you do casually so to speak hmm. that's one thing you should i mean if ever like you were to do it like i don't know it's a very personal question like yeah. i'm not going to tell anyone you should do it right you know like if ever you were to do it like i think there should go some kind of consideration into it like where you know how strong is your mind like um who are you with like you should right. be comfortable with these people the environment cuz these are altered state of consciousness so yes, to absolutely. speak like you'll feel see hear things differently um and it's all perceived by the five senses essentially you know like yeah. but again the last thing i want to say is and what these scriptures are also saying mm-hmm. is they're just experiences right okay um you engage in one of these substances you know that experience will come and go yeah. um yes there might be some insights um but what is most important is what are you taking away from away it, from it yeah. you know like and um it shouldn't be just like a thing or like you know like let's have fun kind right. of a thing it's right. it's it's not that in my opinion i also think that people why should people be deprived of this if there is a setup i know it's a very you know very recently you must have heard that you know at uh, un india said that you know you should we, we should rethink about you know decriminalizing 
uh, cannabis. Yeah. It was very recent. Yeah. I mean, they've just, for the first time, they've spoken about it. Yeah. And all the stoners inside are like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. But here's the thing. Why should people be deprived of such experiences? Just like alcohol. Yeah, exactly. So, right. I feel like prohibition. Right. Doesn't necessarily work. But where do you draw the line then? Because then people, are, uh, you know, you've seen people on the roads. Okay. So, I've seen both the sides. I've spoken to cops as well. Not just because they are in, uh, you know, they they also show you the ugly side. So there are uh, people who are, you know, drug addicts. They don't want that. It's not like, you know, uh, to keep them alive inside a cell, cops have to keep some substance with them. Because if they don't give it to them, I'm not talking about regular recreational users. I'm talking about junkies who've mm. lost it, who've got punctured holes in their thighs and, you know, they take, I don't know what the substance is, either it's brown sugar, heroin, whatever they inject inside. But you can see a life already being ruined in front of mm. you. So they, cops literally say that they start foaming mm. inside the cells. The condition is so bad that they start foaming and they might die. And a cop will never want someone to die in custody, right? Mm. Even if that guy was a peddler or whatever. But he's like all barely alive. Mm. And he's on the substance. But to keep him alive, they are sometimes, sometimes they're forced to keep some because yeah. they don't want him to die. So where do you exactly draw the line? Because things are going really ugly as well. Yeah. No, you and I can I'm not an expert to, you know, speak on this subject because I haven't done enough kind of, because I've only had access to limited number of things. And um, I feel that overall, hmm. there's a time and place for a thing. Right. And it's happening right now. Right. Like it is being legalized across the world. Right. Whatever is being legalized and whatever is not being legalized. Right. I feel if we have a general sense of... Um, sensibility right. behind these things exactly um, exactly then there's certain framework that right. can be built again like i'm not an expert to say what it should be or shouldn't be right. but i feel like it's being done already yeah where there is certain amount of well there's other questions that come up when you talk about these things yeah. you know there's uh, prescription medicines as well mm. you know there's the um uh, opioid um, right. uh, situation in the US that is a huge problem right. um, which is from prescription medicines yeah. so all of these issues are kind of the same for me hmm. like if a certain thing is being abused it can be food as well sugar you know people are dying of eating excessive food right. or excessive yeah. certain kind of food yeah. so it's all in the same thing for me and the only thing I feel you can do is educate yeah you know exactly. you put the information out there you yes you speak your message you put it out there and people are educated like i feel even what is happening in india recently the biggest thing biggest takeaway is essentially education like yeah. is myths being busted like right. is you actually getting knowledge about whatever is being spoken about right. and not necessarily i mean individual opinions are anyway going to be individual opinion there right. are some people who are never going to come around or never going to touch or never going to believe in the benefits yeah. of it which yeah. is okay yeah. but at least they should have the information about what it is right you know the benefits of medical cannabis are undeniable like 100%. it's it's yeah. it's benefiting so many people i've seen people around me benefit from it and it's undeniable yeah okay can it be abused? Anything and everything can be abused right. and is being abused. Is being abused. Now, yes. what are the steps you can take? What are the steps you can't take? That's for a question for the experts. Right. Like how can you design a, a system where, you know, there is benefit, but not abuse, so to speak. Regulated. You know? Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and again, like, I, I think we should look at these substances for what they are mm. and not for, you know, like a, I don't know, this, like something like supernatural or something evil. Like some of these things are really very, very harmful substances, like yeah, yeah. if taken by a human. So obviously there is, you know, science can be used in this, like do testing and, you know, like see what's happening. But the benefits are undeniable and mm. that's the time and place we're in today mm. so um, it's not a question really like should people have access to it or not yeah like it's how and when yes. you know 
and what is again what people have access to and what not is a very um, interesting question and we'll find out in 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 due time like how it all pans out yeah anything else that you want to say about <laughs> um no nah, man like it's been a pleasure obviously hanging out with you Likewise, and every talking day. to you as as always and um i'm happy that i had the opportunity to come here and have a chat with you and maybe we can do it again another time sure maybe we'll place. do it uh, on your podcast when yeah. you start that'll be awesome <laughs> yeah why not thanks yeah. lot thanks